Hello, we are here today with composer Victor Marquez Barrios, the composer of Caracas, the piece that we are going to premiere in uh, this performance today. Victor, welcome virtually to Oberlin. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. I would like to start by asking you about the, the origins and, and the inspiration for Caracas. Yeah, um, I think in, in thinking about this, um, I was realizing that one, one skill that composers inevitably develop is patience, or I don't know if that's a skill, but uh, we, we certainly learn how to be patient. And this is one of those pieces that I've been wanting to write for a long time, but waiting for the right moment. And, and this was the right moment uh, for a number of reasons but mainly because I know that that's a place that we both love. And so when, when I got uh, your invitation to work together, and this is something I do whenever I have the opportunity of collaborating is, is try to find something that the performers are gonna be excited about. And, and I, I, in, in thinking what could be something um, I think this this thought came up. This is this is a place that we talk about often. This is a place that we both miss and that we both remember with with fondness, with love. Um, and and so it seemed like the right time to to write that piece that I had been, as I said, wanting to write for a while. Uh, I am not from Caracas, as you know. I was born and raised in Maracaibo, which is another place I love. Um, but I I did live in Caracas for not only. A significant amount of time, but a but a time that was significant for me. Um, my first few experiences as a, as a professional musician uh, were in Caracas. Uh, that's where I met my wife. That's where I made a number of friends um, and, and and had wonderful teachers. And so it is it is a place that in the time that I lived there, which was about eight eight or nine years, I I very much learned to love and I miss and I you know. This, this was a way to maybe go back a little. Yeah, and, and you created a really, really beautiful, beautiful work. And uh, the piece has two movements and Serenata is the first one and Estación Bellas Artes is the second one. So why don't we talk about them? Why don't we talk about the Serenata? Yeah, so um, Caracas is a, a, a gorgeous city that sits in the valley. Uh, it's, it's super green. There's all of these videos on YouTube of like these macaw birds coming, the guacamayas coming to people's balcony. It's a place that for uh, as, as complex, as, as big of an urban center, center as it is, remains very beautiful, very green. Um, and, and that mountain uh, has been the inspiration of many poets and painters and artists. And so it's a very romantic city when it wants to be, <laughs> when at the right time of day or the right moment. And, and that, that property, uh, that ability to be romantic is something that many poets uh, again, have, have written about, there's lots of music and songs written about this. And I, I wanted to be one more. I wanted to do my own um, song to Caracas or song to, to that side of the city. And that so first, I want to do something lyrical, yeah. Yeah, and that first movement is not only lyrical, but it is dreamy and has some, something that resembles the, the bells of the cathedral and uh, it can be nocturnal at some point. It feels uh, or early morning feeling. It has that that very peaceful um, a, a character, and as you as you said, very lyrical. And then we enter into the other aspect of the city when we talk when when you write about Estación Bellas Artes, which is the fine arts station of the subway, which is in the cultural district of the city where many institutions are centered. We have a couple of museums, we have 
the uh, a theater uh, complex and we have the, the biggest cultural complex in, in the country where the opera, the ballet and many concerts. So a lot of things happen in that area and there's a subway station and a lot of traffic and a lot of people going through and is the hub of some of the most interesting people in uh, the, the city where pretty much is, is the artist uh, district. So you try to capture uh, the, that in your second movement, but you do that by using mainly uh, a rhythm that is very characteristic of Venezuelan music, particularly of Caracas. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, so Estación Bellas Artes, as you say, the subway station brings, brings a lot of memories. Uh, my, my first, my first uh, experiences in that place where as a visitor, I was, a, it was, I was still living in, in my hometown of Maracaibo and traveling to Caracas to go to the guitar festival or things that were happening there. And of course, I was not driving in town, I was taking subway and, and getting out in this station that could be scary because it, it is very busy and, and not, not always pretty. Um, but, then, but then you enter this cultural complex that's amazing and have these, these great artistic experiences and then you go back to the buses and the busyness and all of that. Um, but then as a professional musician, I went there a lot to work too. And, as, as you know, uh, I, part of my work as a professional musician in Caracas was in the context of these, uh, I, I had an ensemble named Nencayapa, which was part of a movement that was trying to fuse, creating all sorts of interesting experiments between traditional music, folk music, and um, elements of urban music and jazz and classical and all of that. And, and I very much enjoyed being, being part of that. And being part of that, um, I, I, I was able to, to explore, to get to know better some of our uh, folk music, some of our traditional rhythms like that merengue caraqueño that you're talking about. Uh, which is uh, very characteristic, is in 5-8, and it's something that has been the subject of a lot of fusion and interpret um, interpretation is not the word, experimentation is a word. And it, it brought me back there. It also has a, a property that seems to bring together that tradition, but also that, that busyness, that um, noisy quality of the city. So yeah. and yeah. the, the five aid uh, of the merengue is, is of course fascinating because we always believe that in order for people to be able to dance to a rhythm, that rhythm has to be regular, and this is not a regular rhythm, but we still dance to to it, um, uh, and we enjoy it a lot. And let me let me tell you what what you did with it was uh, very challenging uh, for for the group. But the amazing thing is that from day one the group embrace the challenge with great enthusiasm um, because you know there's there's the gratification of of feeling that when everything falls together uh the piece has that ability of making you dance so um yeah it, it's, it's a very very energetic uh picture of that urban chaos that that is the the area of the uh, final station of the subway it is definitely uh, a great piece and we enjoy a lot putting it together so um victor we would like to thank you so much for this great gift uh, of writing the piece for the Oberlin orchestra it is an honor for us that we have gotten your music and that we get the opportunity of bringing this to life bringing this piece uh, uh to the world uh, so they get to know your music Thank you so very much. No, please. Thank you and the musicians because you put so much energy and love and it's sounding great. I'm very happy with, with what's happening with this piece. Thank you for um, the opportunity. Uh, I, I'll share these with our viewers. I got the call from Maestro here uh, in the middle of the pandemic. And we're six months, eight months, I don't remember, into this pandemic. and you know, we're all wondering what's going to happen and, and trying to find a reason to be hopeful. And the opportunity of writing this piece for you guys was really 
what I needed. It was really motivational. It was, it was, I was very happy to go back into writing um, this piece for, for the Oberlin Orchestra. So thank you so much for that. Thank you.